It's been a pretty big week for Super Rugby Opiki off the field, but thankfully the on-field action in round two was just as interesting. The first game of the weekend was between the hotly favoured Chiefs Manawa and the Blues. I was super lucky I was able to attend this game out in Pakaranga. I had a great time and the vibe was entirely different to a men's rugby game and I mean that in the best possible way. If you have the opportunity to go out and support these women, I implore you to do it 100%. The standard of rugby is incredibly high. Something that I thought was awesome was this group of sort of 9 to 10 year old boys and they were on the sideline and Ruby Tui was right in front of them. And they were going, Ruby, Ruby, give us a mana wave. Because she's a superstar, of course she obliged and it just made these boys day. Seeing women athletes through the eyes of young children, they're idols to them. And that's something that I probably couldn't imagine even five years ago. A real heart warmer for sure. The big names certainly starred for the Manawa in the opening spell, with both Grace Steinmetz and Ruby Tui scoring early. The Blues were kept scoreless in the first half, which I think is down to the clinical nature of the Chiefs Manawa performance, and at halftime the score was 12 points to zero in favour of the Manawa. But after halftime, the Blues came alive. They hit the ground running and were certainly making all the moves early on. Manawa loose forward China Hohepa got yellow carded for a breakdown infringement, giving the Blues the perfect opportunity to capitalise, and that's exactly what they did through a Mel Puckett try. Shout out to Mel Puckett, she's been in awesome form, she was great to watch in person, darting around, the speed of her pass, hugely impressive. Now despite the Blues making all the moves, having all the energy and having a lot of position, the Manawa managed to dot down through former Northern Mystics netballer and turned rugby star Grace Kukutai, which swung the momentum back in favour of the Manawa and the Blues just weren't really able to overcome that. There were a couple of last gasp attempts at the line but they were undone by poor handling which is really unfortunate. Manawa ultimately proved why they're this year's favourites for Super Rugby Opiki and held out the Blues 17 points to 10. Then we travelled down to Wellington where the Hurricanes Polwa were taking on Matatu. Following a challenging week off the field, the Polwa certainly came out and silenced their critics, namely Deputy Prime Minister Winnie P, with a convincing victory over the defending champions. I think it's really important to note that the Polwa performed a new altered haka this week, one that had been crafted in collaboration with the wider organisation. It's nice to see the players finally getting some backing from their organisation, Polwa to the people. Straight out the gates, the Polwa came out very strong with tries to Isabella Waterman and Monica Tongawai. They took an early lead and it stayed that way until half time, 19 points to 15. The Polwa extended their lead after half time, which incited a bit of a late resurgence from Matatu. Kaipor Olsen Baker and Amy Rule led the charge for the Southern team. The Polwa managed to hold on, withstand the pressure, and ultimately come out victorious, which I think was the best possible result for them after what was such a difficult week. The final score was 36 points to 29, which means that last year's victors, Matatu, are now zero wins from their first two games. It will be something they'll be looking to correct. ASAP. So in terms of players who are looking really strong, who are we talking about? Firstly for the Blues, Eldora Etunu, the big prop, she made some huge carries, hugely dynamic, I loved watching her play. And same goes for number 8, Tafito Lafaele. It would take sort of three defenders to bring her down. She was making some huge charges through the midfield. For the Manawa, the experienced players really showed their class this weekend. Renee Holmes and her kicking proved to be a lot of the difference. Chelsea Bremner was just all over the park. Just see her popping up here and here and here. For the Polwa, Shakira Baker. Again, she would attract so many defenders, it was so hard to bring her down, and that kind of power in the midfield is invaluable. And I thought Rihanna Ferris was hugely crucial for them at the breakdown, winning turnovers, causing problems for Matatu. And looking at Matatu, Kendra Reynolds, always a strong presence in the pack, and Isabella Waterman, who managed to dot down for two tries. Looking forward to round three, we've got the Blues taking on the Polwa. And a rematch of last year's final, the Manawa vs Matatu. Let me know who impressed you this weekend and if you're heading out to any of the games that are happening next week.